as we get ready to jump back into the text, come on, we're going to pick back up in Joshua 11. And just to give a little bit of recap real quick, come on, we've been we've been traveling the scriptures together, family. It's been very, just very packful of just our journey from, from, from Joshua 1 and, and then all the way up into now. And, and as you guys know, in Joshua 10, where we left off at um, in this past Friday, just a very powerful time. We we can we can see that Israel is beginning to conquer conquer the southern region of Can Canaan, and, and we 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 talked about the kings coming together to form an alliance to take down the Gibeonites, to take down Israelites, and we begin to begin to unpack that. and And Joshua had the audacity to pray a crazy prayer that Joshua had crazy faith in. We begin to talk about, come on, when, when the enemy knows that you're on a move, when the enemy knows that you have progress, come on, when the enemy knows that, hey, you know what, they're walking in the truth, the enemy knows, hey, we got to come together and stop them. We have to stop the progress in their life. So this is why you you you, you see, and this is why we're taking our time walking through Joshua. We we understand that, hey, we, we don't fight with flesh and blood. And, and you're not in a physical battle right now. Hopefully, you're not in a physical battle, but you are in a spiritual battle. And that's the application. That's the context that we're taking from, from his word in here. Yes, where God is calling us to conquer some things. And, and, and just as in that land of Canaan is beautiful blessings, but also in that land of Canaan comes warfare. Yeah, intense warfare. In order to conquer something, you're going to have to go through some battles to possess it. So if you're in the middle of a battle right now, history repeats itself. And we understand from his scriptures or, on how God is setting us up. He's setting you up so that you can conquer something better in your life. I released that word into the atmosphere. I, I, I released that word over your life that, that God is calling you to better in. And then in Joshua, uh, Joshua 10, God, I mean, excuse me, Joshua began to call on God and God, hey, made the sun stay, stand still and they were able to defeat the southern kings. And so now we pick up here in Joshua 11. And just to give a little bit of uh, context here so you know kind of where we are. And, and to be honest, I think I, I'm really seeing two messages that God wants us to unpack today. Uh, well, actually, two messages in this chapter. I'm going to do the first one today, and I'm going to actually do the second one tomorrow because I really want to take my time with that second one because I really think it's it's a lot of meat in it. It's a lot of substance, and I, I really want you to get it. I want you. I don't want to kind of breeze through. I really wanted to sit, uh, and I think it's going to be very impactful when we unpack it. But for our time today, in Joshua 11, just to give a little bit of context, so we we all on the same page. That the Israelites there. That they're going to conquer the land, that they're conquering, excuse me, the northern part of the region. And, and just like the southern kings, if you begin, when we get, begin to read in, in the first couple of verses, just the same thing. The southern kings saw the Israelites coming. Now, the northern kings see the same thing. And what do they do? They, 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 they join alliance, they, uh, allegiance, and they come together, they assemble together. And here's what the enemy, we, the enemy, we, we, we talked about it. The enemy plan really never changes in your life. Let me pause right there. The enemy has been dealing with you the same since you've been a kid, a teenager, and now in adulthood. The enemy, he's really not that, he's cunning, but he's really not that smart. He just changes his, his, his um, the way that his method on how he wants to dress it in your life. It may come in a different form or fashion, but down to the core, he's been dealing with you the same, and, and he's been dealing with your identity the same. He, he's been dealing with your thought process the same. He's been dealing with you, and maybe it's been rejection, and, and you had rejection when you were a kid, and now you have rejection in teenager, and now you have, you have rejection in adulthood. He, he deals with us the same. Why? Because he has a three-track mind. I told you that already. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He, he doesn't change up his, his, his core of who he is and how he deals with you through deception and lies. He just may dress it up in a different way, but it's down to the same core. He's a father of all lies. And, and, and the enemy is, 
in, in this book of Joshua, we're, say, we're saying the same thing, the same pattern. Understand the pattern. That, 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 that's, that's a key thought right there. Let me pause. Understand, here's growth. Here's growth in your life. Here's growth in your life. Understanding when you're maturing in Christ is having the awareness of, 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 of seeing the enemy schemes in your life, of, of how the enemy loves to attack you. That's growth. So when it begins to happen, this is why God says, Jesus said it this way, uh, my, 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 my children, come on, my sheep, they, 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 they know my voice. Another voice they will not follow. I understand through proximity on how I hear God's voice. So when another voice begins to speak, I see, uh, oh, oh I, I saw that before. They, you tried to trip me up like that five years ago. I, I see what you're doing when I, when I want to walk in isolation. I, I begin to hear that voice more. I'm not going to follow that voice. I'm going to follow this voice right in his word. And that's growth for you. See, see, sometimes we get hung up. This is for somebody. Sometimes we get hung up on, wow, I'm being attacked. But the truth is, or, or why am I feeling this? Or, or, or should I be feeling this? Should I be having these thoughts? And a lot of times you, you cannot control what happens to you, family. But the true growth is understanding how you respond to the things that's coming your way. You may not be able to con control every thought that comes into your mind, but you can, con you can control the response of it. And here's Joshua. Once again, the, the, the enemies are combining to bring them down. He can feel very defeated right now, or he can respond through the confidence of knowing that God is with them. So the word gets out that they're coming. They begin to assemble together. And God encourages Joshua. And he says, at this time tomorrow, at this time tomorrow, I will deliver them all into your hand. Victory is yours, Joshua. So here's the thing. I, I'm just sweeping through because I want, actually want to get to the end of the chapter because I think that's really something, mm, excuse me, powerful at the end of the chapter that normally gets skipped over. And God has said, God said, no, speak that word today, Anthony. Some strong revelations get ready to come. And Joshua, they, they begin to sweep through the northern region. You can go through and read it. I mean, they were, they, they, they were just knocking, knocking them down. They were just wiping them out. And, 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 and But it's like when we get down to Joshua 21. If you can scroll down to Joshua chapter 11, 21. And this is after all of the intense warfare. This is after they begin to go on just a win streak of battles, of just sweeping through win after win. And that's, that's, that's the promise that, that God told Joshua, I would deliver them all. Come on, not one will stand against you. Remember that? Not one. I, I, I'm wiping them all. I, I'm going to build your confidence in this season, Joshua. You're going to see one king fall. You're going to see another king fall. You're going to see me do miracle after miracle. And I can just imagine as a leader, Joshua, confidence where what was beginning to rise because God had him in such a process of just winning battle after battle. And I believe God has that for you. You feel the warfare. But hear me, my friend, you're winning these battles. You feel the intense warfare, but you got to, re you got to read the right scoreboard because you're winning. There's fruit in your life. If you look a little bit closer, you take a little bit, a second look at what God is doing. Don't just get caught up in the, the feeling of the warfare. Get caught up in, in knowing his promises right in the middle of that storm, right in the middle of that warfare. But we go right here in verse 21. This is something very powerful. And I'm going to read it real quick and I'm going to give some context. It says, at that time, Joshua proceeded to exterminate. Excuse me, I'll read it from the CSB. Let me say that again, just, just in case you, you're following along right in your Bible. From the CSB. At that time, Joshua proceeded to exterminate the Anonikim from the hill country, Hebron, Deborah, and Anab all the hill country of Judah and Israel. Joshua completely destroyed them with their cities. Mm. 
I want you to go back up. <laughs> I, I want you to go back up and underline Anakim. Mm. Anakim. Underline that. If you, if, if, if this, this skipped over me for years, to be honest. And, and God began to show me this. Matter of fact, I'll be honest, God began to show me this a couple of years and just studying the word and preaching the word. Just, we, this actually comes from something very powerful. And early in, in, in the scriptures, something very powerful in numbers. It comes from a story that we we all hear in church. We hear preachers preach it all the time. But sometimes you can get so familiar and caught up in, 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 in the scriptures and familiarity, like, oh, I heard that word, Pastor. And, and, and it can easily just wash right over you. That's why his word is manifold. You always got to pay attention because he can be giving you something very new at this time. And when we look at an Anakim, hmm, who are these people? So do me a favor real quick. Turn to Numbers 13. Turn to Numbers 13. And I'm going to go there with you. Turn to Numbers 13. And this is going to be powerful. I want to show you something. Numbers 13, verse 26. I want to show you something. Here we go. Numbers 13, verse 26. Watch this. Watch this, family. The men went back, back to Moses and Aaron and the entire Israel, Israelite community in the wilderness of Pira and Kadesh. This is the story of the spies going into the land of, of, of the promised land. This is the story where, where Caleb and Joshua, just to give a little bit of context, because God is setting this up. God is setting this up. I'm taking my time because I really, I don't want to preach it. I really just want to kind of Talk it, if that's okay, because I want you to catch this for your word, and I, I really do believe this is a word. This is actually an echo of what God was saying Sunday. This is actually an echo of what God was saying yesterday, and he's bringing it back to our attention. And this is very powerful. Watch this. They brought back a, back a report for them and a whole community, and they showed them the fruit of the land. There's fruit in that land. Mm. They reported to Moses. We went into the land where you sent us. Indeed, it is flowing with milk and honey. And here is some of the fruit. However, mm, here we go. However, <laughs> however, the people living in the land are strong mm, and the cities are large and fortified. We also saw the descendants of Anak mm, there. The Amalekites are living there, living in the land of the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites. Amorites, all of them, live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live by the sea and along the Jordan. Mm. This is powerful. Did, did, did you catch that family? Did you, did you catch it? Anak, Anakim. This is the connection. These are the descendants. So when we go to Anakim, these are, this is the connection. When they were, I'm taking my time right here. I just want to talk it. I'm not going to preach it. I'm not going to yell it. I'm trying not to, but my passion is getting ready to take over. This is so, this is very powerful because early in the scriptures, we see here in Numbers that God gave them a word to say, hey, I'm getting ready to send you to a place and, and I'm getting ready to conquer it. Joshua and Caleb came back with the right report. But the community, the other spies came back with a different report based on who they saw. And they said, now nah, we, I see what you're saying. I see the fruit, but we can't take that. The, the Anna Kings are there and they're strong. They're mighty. They, they were grasshoppers to them. And, and this, and now all through, this is 40 years. Let me give context. Mm. This is 40 years later where we're, we're now. They're getting ready to go back and defeat the ones that they were questioning, should we even start this whole process? Mm. They're actually going back because in numbers, they say, we, we can't do this. It's no way that we can conquer this. It's no way that we can overcome this. It's no way. Look at us and look at them. Look at us and, and, and look at what we're up against. Is there anybody in a season like that right now? That you're saying, it's, it's no way I can overcome this. It's no way that we can actually be strong in this season. It's, it's no way. And, and we can stay in a number 13 season where we're now, where the community, if you go actually and read numbers 14, actually after they came back with the report, the, the false bad report, 
and not believe in the report of the Lord, what happened to the congregation? What happened to the community? The community started mumbling and saying, Moses, why, why do you even have us out here? It's like the morale just started to go down. And, and if, if you don't surround yourself with the right community, you can stay in a Numbers 13 season in your life where people are questioning, should we even move forward? But now Joshua is right here in Joshua 11. Go ahead and flip back to Joshua 11 because this is powerful. This is powerful because God saves the best for last. Mm. God, God saves the best for last. A lot of us, to be honest, a lot of us think that Jericho was the best battle. I actually think this battle is the best battle. And the reason why I think it's the best battle is because they're actually getting ready to go up against an enemy that they thought they could never defeat. They're actually getting ready to go up against the one that was that tried to keep them out in the wilderness without even putting a hand on them. Just what they I saw, their heart begins to melt in fear. And God is saying, I'm taking you back to Numbers 13, and I'm saving the best for last. Remember when you felt that you were too small. Remember when you felt that you were insecure. Remember when you felt that you can't defeat this. Remember when you felt that, you, that you're back up against the wall. I'm bringing I'm saving the best for last, and we're getting ready to go and wipe out the one that you thought that you could never defeat. And I speak that word over to you today, my friend. And this is why God is saying it's time to go back. It's time to get up. But it's time to go back and, re and remember the things that you wrote in your journal. It's time to go back and remember the things that you wrote about that dream, about that book that you're getting ready to write, about that business that you're getting ready to, to do. God is saying it's time to go back because God has placed some things in our heart. But sometimes our eyes can trip us up. And God is saying, I'm reminding you in this season to go back. Because they gave a false report, but Caleb and Joshua was, was, was trying to give the right report. And, 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 and in that number season, this is why I'm, I want to continue to make the connection, and we're going to get ready to land it pretty soon. But I want to make the connection because you can live in that number 13 season with the, with the wrong spies and, and the false report, or we can transition into a Joshua season in 11 where we're getting ready to conquer all of these kings. Because sometimes family, when we're building on the wrong foundation, they could not move because they were trapped on based on what they saw. Yeah. So in Numbers 13, where it was time to move, this is 40 years. For, for 40 years later, they, they eventually finally moved forward. But God had already given them the promise. And could it be that they were building on the wrong found foundation? Could it be that fear cause them to build on the wrong foundation. And, and when we're trying to build something in this season, you can be you can begin to build on the wrong foundation. Well, what is the wrong foundation? We don't build on we don't build on anxious. We don't build on depression. We don't build on not prepared. We don't build on what you know what this is not right now. This is not the season. No, we build on the promises of God. God has given them a promise and he said, you know what? I'm going to heal you. Guess what, my friend? You're going to be healed. If God says, I'm going to heal your heart, I'm going to heal your mind. Guess what? In this season, you're going to be healed. But you know what? No, I don't see it, Anthony. I'm not asking you what you see. I'm not asking you what you feel. I'm asking you in this season, what has God been speaking to you in your spirit? And God is saying, I'm releasing a word. Do you believe the report of the Lord? Or are we going to be like the spies and stay trapped in a season based on what we feel and based on what we see? No, we're going to be we're going to move forward based on what the spirit is saying to our, our mind, our, our heart and our body right now. And I told you on this past Sunday and I'm reminding you right now that God is saying this is the season of your green light. And when you can get a green light in the inside, my God, I'm feeling it again. Here we go. Um, when you can get a green light down in the inside down in the inside of your mind, down in the inside of your heart. Give me a green light so that I'm no longer staring at a green light thinking it's a red light, but it's actually a green light to move forward in its favor, to move forward in mercy, to move forward because access has been granted. 
I don't want to stay stuck in, in a wilderness too long thinking I'm I'm stuck because of, because of the complexity of what's going on. No, I want to receive his anointing and his grace to move forward in power. And this is what God is saying. This is what God is saying. This is why we have to build on the right thing, on his word. This is why we have to build our life because God is speaking a thing and God showed Joshua that, hey, you know what? Get back up. I, I know what they said in Numbers 13, 40 years ago, but get back up. Get back up. And, and here's, here's my first point is this. If you're taking notes for, for all of our, our great note takers out there, I got notes for you. Here, here comes some application. Point number one is this. Have faith to get back up. I believe this is a get back up season for a lot of us. And when I mean by get back up, I, 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 I'm meaning to return to some things that God had, that, that God has spoke to you, to, to return back to, to his promises, to get back up and, and touch and agree with what heaven ha has already said about you, to get back up in, in the proper routine, to get back up in, in, in the patterns of discipleship. To get back up, being in a healthy community. To, to get back up. Come on, I'm going to speak a word to Murray folks real quick. To surround yourself with healthy couples. Can I speak a word to single people? To have yourself planning around people with like-mindedness. If you're in a dating season, let me say that. To surround yourself or even get connected with some Murray folks. Can I say that? Who, 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 can, who you can glean from. In a season where God is preparing you for, for your next dimension. See, get back up to and to connect to the right thing. Because you, whatever you're connected to, you will eventually become. And this is your get back up season. This is your return season. And we can stay in Numbers 13 or we can transition to Joshua 11. This is why Proverbs 24, 16, write this down. Proverbs 24, 16 says is this it says though a righteous person falls seven times he will get up but the wicked will stumble into ruin we all gonna fall we're all gonna fall away from 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 the things that we need to be doing whether that's patterns behaviors sin what, 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 whatever it is be nobody on his call is perfect it's only one and his name is Jesus Christ but the but the one that's connected to Jesus will get back up. And God is returning you saying, hey, return back and get back up writing. Return back and get back up believing. Return right and get back up in my word. Return right and get back up because I'm calling you to conquer some things. I'm calling you to go after Anakim. I know these, these are the descendants that you were afraid of 40 years ago, but I'm getting ready. I'm saving the best for last. And I believe that's a word for somebody right now. See, faith will allow you to get back up. Faith will allow you to re revisit a dream. Come on, somebody. Faith will, will, will uh, allow you to revisit some notes. Come on. Revisit some notes from 15 years ago and say, my God, I still see your promises. I still see your word. I remember back then in the early 2000s, I had no idea that what you were doing. I was questioning you. I was getting ready to throw in a towel. But God is saying right here in a 2024 season, I'm calling you by faith to get back to some things, to some dreams that you abandoned. And God is saying, this is the year. Come on, somebody. This is the year to get back up because faith to trust God in a Pacific area. I believe this is a time for a lot of us of what God is saying. And my second point is this. My second point is this, is stay in it. Simple as that. Stay in it. Not only have faith to get back up, but stay in it. Stay in it. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It reads this, it says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast, yes, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not vain. Be unmovable. Don't allow the winds, W-I-N-D-S, the winds 
of life, the winds of your thoughts, the winds to blow you and toss you today and in this season. Stay firm in his promises and get back up and, and, and go defeat the very thing. I really believe this. Here's what, here's what I believe. I believe God saved Anakim for last for a purpose. Because he, 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 he's a strategic God. It could it be that God is saying, you know what? You were afraid of, of, of these people 40 years ago. So, so perhaps I, 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 have to, I have to get some momentum in your life. I, I, so we're, we're going to go, we're going to start from the southern kingdom. And we're going to, wake, we're going to work our way up. Because I, 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 have, I, I got to show you, Joshua, and I got to show your people that I'm with them. So I, I have to build momentum. So by the time that we get to them, you will have so much more. You have so much confidence. You have so much truth and proof that I'm with you. And you can see that, hey, you know what? I'm getting ready to conquer this thing. It's, I, I've seen that my God is moving. So what am I, what am I saying? P, hey, PA, what, what are you saying? I'm saying this. You have momentum in your life right now. That's what I'm saying. You have fruits in your life right now. These past two to three weeks have shown you've been committed. You've been trusting God. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you've been in the journey. Come on, we're, we're hearing people getting ready to, to pass that, um, excuse me, getting ready to, to complete their first fast. We're, we're, hearing, we're hearing people are being healed. We're hearing a testimony. Like God is showing you some momentum. And just like I said earlier, no, you have momentum. Do not, do not abort the, the momentum. Because you feel the intensity from the warfare. So you're moving forward. There's progress. And just like we said earlier, in the land of the promised land came beautiful blessings, beautiful fruit, but it also came with intensified warfare. You can't have one without the other, my friend. It's a ripping season. And that's what God is saying, but he, he, he started from the bottom and worked his way to the top. I don't know why I just quoted Drake, for, started from the bottom to the top. Hey, let's keep moving. <laughs> it's 7 a.m. <laughs> but that's the beautiful thing because he created a momentum. And I think that's a word for you today. I believe that's a word for all of us because God showed them something back in Numbers 13 that had what I'm doing right now. Watch this. And this is why we've been saying, hey, it's time to go back. It's time to, it's time to go back and revisit some things. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.